Now that I've got the angular velocity in radians per second, we can find out what the angular momentum is. It's uh, two and a half kilogram meters squared. That's the moment of inertia times 6.28 radians per second counterclockwise. Calculator would have been good. Let's see. 18. Five, six, 18, five, five, six, 18 now check the math. It should be 18.7. And that's going to be kilogram meter squared per second. I'm going to dump the radians. Remember, radians are just a, an accounting technique we use to make sure that we've uh, that we're we're reminded that we're using an angle. But it's just a ratio of, of two numbers. So you can dump it anytime you want, counterclockwise. Okay, that's our angular momentum. Now let's change it. C. For C, we're going to apply a torque. Hmm. We're going to apply a torque of 10. Newton meters. And uh, we're going to apply that torque, and let's do it clockwise. Let's slow the thing down. Let's apply it for a time of, uh, uh, let's see, one and a half seconds. Let's find out what the change in angular momentum is, which is the same as the angular impulse. Delta L equals question mark. So the change in angular momentum is equal to the torque times the change, the time, the elapsed time, which is going to be. 10 newton meters times 1.5 seconds, which would be 15. Oh, I'm sorry, that's clockwise. Don't forget, this is a vector, not a scalar, which is 15 newton meter seconds clockwise. Now, a newton meter second is the same as the kilogram meter squared per second. I can show you that real quick. Right. Kilogram, meters squared per second. I'm going to take meters and I'm going to break it up per second. Now, I want to make a newton out of that. I'll multiply both sides, top and bottom, excuse me, top and bottom by seconds. And what I get here is a newton is a kilogram meter per second squared, right there. And I've left with a meter and a second on top. So that's equal to a newton meter second. So kilogram meter per second, kilogram meter squared per second, and newton meter second, same thing. So we, we had a certain angular momentum. We applied a change in angular momentum. Let's see what the final angular momentum is. Well, let's see. Final angular momentum is equal to the original angular momentum plus the change in angular momentum. Uh, we started off with 18.7 kilogram meter squared per second. That's counterclockwise plus the change in angular momentum. Now this is clockwise. So instead of saying it's plus 15 newton meter seconds clockwise, I'm going to say it's a negative 15 newton meter seconds counterclockwise. If I change the sign, I can change, that means I'm changing the direction.
So I just change it to a negative. And I wind up with 3.7 newton meter second, same as kilogram meter squared per second. I'll just call it kilogram. Doesn't matter, either one works. Per second, clockwise. Now, hey, if I wanted to find the angular velocity, it was moving at 60 revs per minute. Now, I've obviously I've slowed it down by applying a clockwise torque. If I wanted to find out what it was moving at now, I could do this. What's the final angular momentum or angular velocity? Well, let's see, the final, final angular momentum is the moment of inertia times the final angular velocity. So the final angular velocity is the final angular momentum over the moment of inertia. I just solved for the final angular velocity. Took that equation. Now that's uh, 3.7 kilogram meter squared per second divided by mm, two and a half, uh, let's see, kilogram meters squared. Kilogram meters squared come up, disappear. I'll just have equals one over seconds, but I know it's angular velocity, so I can put the radians back in. It's going to be radians per second. This is counterclockwise, so this will be two. And so it's going to be, let's see, 1.48 meters radians per second, counterclockwise. And remember, you want to do this on your own, too. You know, you see me do it, make sure you can do it, too. Last thing we need to talk about, which I meant to do earlier, is collisions.